Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had the opportunity to stretch your legs and, um, and grab a cuppa. We'll now settle into the second part of um, our session today. And I'm really pleased to um, uh, have this next presentation from our host council, Liverpool City Council. Uh, and I'd like to introduce Lance Chia. Lance leads the Liverpool Innovation Precinct, and the precinct is a diverse precinct of health-related public and private sector organisations working across research, ideas development, commercialisation and education. And Mary uh, Wendy Waller made reference to um, it in her earlier welcome. Uh, today you will hear all about the precinct in the presentation, um, a little bit about Lance and all our, the bios of our speakers are on the website, but Lance actually has a career in cl clinical biochemistry um, before he's come to Liverpool Council. And he also has um, quite an active role in mentoring startups. Um, and as I said, his full biography and that of our other speakers is available on the platform. So welcome Lance, thank you very much for joining us. And um, no doubt like, uh, many Sydney siders, you're suffering under a lockdown situation. Obviously, Liverpool is uh, really in the thick of it. So our, our, um, our heartfelt empath empathy as a starting point goes to you and, and the council and all everyone in your community. So we're very grateful that you're able to take the time to be with us today in, that, in those circumstances. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to hearing your presentation. So I invite you to start that now and then we can have a conversation about it as part of the panel later. Thank you, Carla. Um, just, um, yeah, look, th thank you to the, the NGAA for inviting me to speak today. The innovation precincts are one of my favourite things to speak about. Um, but to, give, to, to begin with, I could also acknowledge the traditional custodians from all of the lands from which we're participating today. And for me, it's the land of the, the Dakinjung people, actually up on the central coast, not in Liverpool and pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to um, just note up front our innovation partners, and I will be explaining um, how they fit into the, um, the bigger picture for the Liverpool Innovation Precinct. And uh, you might be surprised to know that it's not about sponsorship or um, funding of anything. Before I start talking about details of the Liverpool Innovation Precinct, I just wanted to talk um, first a bit about innovation precincts or innovation districts in principle. Um, there's something, sometimes it feels like we're hearing about them every day. There's a new one popping up somewhere. So I just wanted to explain really, um, put a particular frame on it so you kind of understand the perspective that we come from no matter in Liverpool. This particular definition is um, from Julie Wagner. Um, Julie is the uh, co-founder of the Global Institute on Innovation Districts and also co-author of um, two of the landmark papers on the evolution and um, growth of innovation districts. You know, here Julie references dense hubs of economic activity where, where a number of capabilities and assets come together. And it's quite important to note you know, that clustering of, of those capabilities um, because they're really important to the um, effectiveness and the ultimate success of an innovation precinct. You know, if you're missing one of those, um, it's not gonna work. Um, in in the, the work that Julie wrote about, she'll talk about, or she talks about having economic assets, um, physical assets and social networking assets and all of the things that you see there and that we work on uh, are encompassed by those. So one way or our way of thinking of an innovation district in a, in a simpler way is to think of it as a, an economic development strategy. So, um, those agencies, authorities or, or you know, local government who, who you know, are leaning on an innovation precinct development as part of their economic development, um, it's very valid to look at it, one of your strategies. For someone like myself who sits right within it, um, you know, it's a system to me, I'm very much um, you know, trying to find a word other than ecosystem, but I haven't found it yet. It is an ecosystem, all those assets and capabilities that come together need to work together. Um, that's what we've been building in Liverpool. And so that 
that's maybe a, a simpler way for people to think of innovation precincts or districts when you hear about it. The Liverpool Innovation Precinct itself is a collaboration of 10 really significant um, organisations of which Liverpool City Council is one. Originally, there were nine founding partners, um, but Sydney Catholic Schools um, joined with us uh, late last year um, and bring quite a lot to the, to the collaboration. The Innovation Precinct itself focuses on health research and education. Um, in the first instance, and, and there are some very valid reasons for that, which I'll talk about. And in looking at it as an economic development strategy, um, the idea of commercialising innovation is a really important part of it. So a saying that I have is innovation is just a novelty unless it delivers value. And delivering that value um, in solving health problems is really important, um, not just for Liverpool or the Liverpool community, um, but the good thing about solving health problems is if it's a problem that we have, then there's a good chance that health problem exists elsewhere as well. Ultimately, again, with our economic development lens on it, um, commercialising innovations, commercialising technologies, pushing those out um, to, for small businesses to, to scale um, is the economic piece. So, so it's not about our research institutes or our universities or council or the hospital innovating and commercializing them for their benefit. It's how do we create the support and the structures and the systems to help those technologies be commercialized? And then from that, generating new business, from that, generating new jobs and careers, and then making that impact in Southwest Sydney. Finding a really important piece to being able to do that properly is bringing the commercial experience to that innovation mindset. It's one thing to be innovative. It's another thing to understand how to commercialize those technologies. So this aerial shot of Liverpool, um, the main road you can see down the bottom and then curving to head up north is, is the Hume Highway, um, heads up north and that corner that it goes around is the, the CBD of Liverpool. The red line that you see is the current border of the precinct. Um, we already have some, some activities going on that, that looks to potentially expand that border. But I'll refer you back to that definition when, when Julie's um, definition refers to dense hub, then you can see that within the borders of the, the Liverpool Innovation Precinct, we have that really clustering of, of our partners. So we have three university partners. Two of them have physical campuses within the precinct. University of New South Wales doesn't have a separate campus, but Liverpool Hospital is their teaching hospital, and they have some teaching and research assets within the hospital grounds itself. Uh, the Ingham Institute for Applied Medical Research is literally across the road from the hospital. Um, we have four schools um, from kindergarten through to year 12, um, and you may have heard of a recent announcement of a new primary school being approved to be developed within some of that green space that you see there around Liverpool Boys High School. Um, and then Liverpool Council itself has uh, currently two physical assets or two buildings within that precinct. Um, importantly, within that precinct, we also have Liverpool train station, um, the bus interchange. So obviously public transport is really interest, um, important to an innovation precinct. Um, and very, very close to the major retail centre. The, the steering committee for the innovation precinct came together. Um, it must be like potentially over, maybe over, over four years old now. Um, and it didn't actually come together for the innovation precinct, um, but, but it was to, to advocate and argue for the redevelopment of Liverpool Hospital. And it was out of that collaboration that the, the idea of doing more with that collaboration um, and looking at innovation precinct came about. But to really validate that thinking, um, some research was commissioned to be done by the steering committee and the report from that research, which we just called the reimagining document came out. Um, and if there was one thing that came out of that report that validated the value of the Liverpool Innovation Precinct um, going ahead. It was this one piece um, 
which Jeremy Thorpe here is quoted as, as, as presenting that in their research where there was a major hospital anchor adjacent to universities, the ability to develop um, jobs and economic activity, activity was twice the rate of the rest of Sydney. Mm -hmm. So if Liverpool just had one thing to say this was the right thing to do, just that, that finding alone was it. So keeping in mind that um, economic development strategy framing that we put to the innovation precinct, these are the objectives that, that we currently have in mind. We really build on the key strengths in Liverpool of health research and education. And in fact, um, in the latest um, employment statistics that we have up to 2020, the number one um, employer for Liverpool is actually healthcare and social assistance. Um, it's over 14% of total employment is in healthcare and social assistance compared to um, almost 12% for the greater Sydney area and 13% for New South Wales and average. So which is certainly the strength for Liverpool. Supporting and, and driving knowledge intensive jobs, um, very much a visionary objective looking ahead of, of where the opportunities for, for going to be and, and it's in those jobs where the the capital that, that their employees and the staff bring to the jobs is their ability to think um, those of you who are familiar with you know, industry 4.0 it's not so much about the uh say the manufacturing but the connectivity and the digital technologies and the communication between your assets to help that manufacturing happen so developing engineers scientists uh, IT, um, cyber security, um, those sorts of, of skill sets uh, are part of the Liverpool Innovation Precinct thinking. As I mentioned before, supporting the economic growth of the region by solving those problems and, and using technology to fill those gaps. Integrating schools into our thinking um, has been there right from the start. Um, you know, it's easy to think of workforce planning from year 12 to university or tertiary training, but um, we have a, a, I guess our philosophy in, in, in Liverpool is to live, learn, work and play. And that starts for us with kindergarten in developing systems and um, programs that whatever stage of education um, a, a local child is at, they'll have the opportunity to understand what health may offer them as an opportunity or developing skill sets. And in fact, uh, we have a separate subcommittee which just looks at that um, schools because we have TAFE as a partner, as well as the three universities, um, Sydney Catholic schools, and while the other high schools aren't financial members of the LIP, they attend the steering committee meetings and we get input um, from the principals of those schools. And in fact, um, there was a piece of work done on what we call the Integrated Health School, which was um, uh, received an award from a, a GSC planning award in 2019, I think it might have been. Talk about the commercialization of startups and research outcomes, and I'll talk about that in a bit more detail later on. We also don't think just locally, but we, we think locally first. Uh, but the bigger picture is to be able to help businesses expand outside of just the LTA or the LHD. And that includes internationally. Um, and the most immediate region for us is in the Asia Pacific. The international um, piece. Um, we got to do quite quickly because it can take quite a bit of time to develop those relationships and develop those um, international engagements. And so one of the first things um, I did when I came into the role was to look to see where those opportunities were. And near the end of 2019, um, we had eight digital health startups visit Liverpool, Liverpool Innovation Precinct. Enterprise Singapore is is like Singapore's version of Austrade. And so they were conducting like a, a trade mission to, to Australia um, and just through some various contacts, we had them visit and two of those digital health startups we continue to have contact with. Um, in March last year, right at the beginning of COVID, in fact, the shutdowns happened right in the middle of this. 
state delegation from New Zealand. We took um, some businesses and startups to New Zealand, to Auckland, um, to visit a few of their innovation precincts and, and developments that they had there. But importantly for these businesses, they were given the opportunity to meet with potential customers. Um, some of them uh, were quite significant global organisations in New Zealand. And being health related businesses and startups, they were also able to hear firsthand how the New Zealand health system um, procurement system worked. So they, they could work out how they could tap into that. That was a really successful trip. Um, unfortunately, not everyone was able to go um, from council because it was, it was in March. And if you remember back to March, that was when um, COVID really hit us hard in Australia. And in fact, um, two days from the end was when the lockdown happened and we were standing in the middle of the main street of Auckland trying to find flights back to some of the um, small business owners. Um, established um, really relevant ecosystem partnerships. And, and I showed you um, some of our innovation partners on, on the opening slide and I'll talk a bit more about how they fit into it all, which is this. Uh, the commercialization advisory group to support um, technology developments. Uh, when I first came into the role, new technology ideas or people, founders and startups, I, I was just managing those myself. And the good thing was we became a victim of our own success. You know, a, a word got out on, on how we were able to support startups and, and it actually became too much um, of a workload for me to handle on my own. So we established a commercialization advisory group, which meets monthly. And it consists of people within the precinct who bring certain capabilities, experience and connections. So we have research experts, we have clinical trial experts, we have people who have um, the networks and understand all the different key people within the hospital. Um, for example, um, connections to intellectual property experts and things like that. Um, and to give this some context, you'll all, all know and have heard about how Australia does so well at research and, and you know, developing new technologies, but we're really poor at commercialising that and turning that into to new businesses. And, and the reason for that is because there's not just one thing that does it. There are, there are a lot of things that do that. And our commercialisation advisory group is our front door that tries to connect all those pieces to help that um, commercialization happen. So a startup founder who comes with some, for a hospital, for example, they might need some clinician input. They don't need to know who the clinician is or, or even physically where they are in the hospital because Comag does that for them. Um, it acts as a filter um, of all the technologies that come to us. And for those that we engage with, we make those connections for them. We've had up to a, almost 80 approaches in less than 12 months. And there's about eight of those that we're engaged with quite deeply. Established the Ingham Centre for Robotics and Health Technologies. Um, we've been told by the New South Wales Chief Scientist, it's the only one that he knows of for health um, in the country. There are eight verticals within that. At one extreme end is surgical robotics. Um, but we're really interested in, in any form of automation that, that helps in, in health. And then with that, we also have digital technologies. We have some startups and people developing things in, in AI and um, virtual reality, augmented reality, um, telehealth, um, sensing, and quite a few things in that. Uh, the Liverpool Innovation Precinct was selected to join the Global Institute on Innovation Districts. That, that, is, that is a global network um, established by Julie Wagner. Um, the benefit for the Liverpool Innovation Precinct is that the GIID do quite deep research in new, evolving and very successful precincts. And that research comes back to us um, as input and information for, to help us um, evolve our district ourselves. And then finally, there's a few awards that we've been able to um, receive. I said two GSC planning awards. Um, last year, we were finalists in the Premier's um, Award. And most recently, um, I think it's the Australian Institute of Landscape Architects Award for the Liverpool Innovation, uh, the Liverpool Council um, Public Domain Master Plan. 
And just a bit more on the GIID. Um, so Liverpool's the only precinct in New South Wales to be a member of that. Um, there's only three in Australia. Um, Monash down in Victoria and Tonsley in Adelaide. Although I believe there may be another one in Victoria. I'm now with Melbourne Clinic opened up. Um, but that, that connection for us is, is proven to be very, very valuable in terms of learning, um, but also just building networks and, and um, having access to, to you know, people working in the same space. So this saying um, you will hear quoted very, very frequently in, um, in startup world or the startup environment. And what it refers to was what I was just speaking about before. And that you know, really to commercialize a technology and idea, it takes a lot of different capabilities to come together. And no startup founder does it on their own. Um, the whole idea of mentoring, for example, on an accelerator program is to bring different expertise and networks in. So what we've been doing in Liverpool, um, largely for the last, um, for me, 18 to, to months to two years, is really building our own village. It's building our village to make sure that we've got all the right huts in place, that we have all the assets and capabilities that we need to advance that commercialization piece that I was talking about. So we've developed um, our own commercialization pathway, although when I say it's our own, we're not doing anything that differently from a pathway point of view to what it takes to commercialize a product, whether that's a company like ResMed, where I was at for a few years, um, or, or a new startup. Our technologies or innovations or ideas can come from, from any number of places. Obviously, our partners, like the Ingham Institute, um, which is an applied medical research institute, um, any of the five hospitals in the local health district, uh, but also our universities, they also have all their own accelerator programs. So UNSW is very, very active and they have uh, a founders program in health specifically called Health 10X. Western Sydney University has Launchpad, which is technology agnostic and similar with the University of Wollongong. Um, and we've, we've worked with teams from all of those programs so far. The CMDT, uh, CMDT stands for the Consortium for Medical Device Technologies. And in that trade mission to New Zealand that I spoke about, one of the outcomes out of that was ultimately um, ended up being um, what we refer to as a, a Trans-Tasman Bybridge. So, uh, so it's a, basically a 10 year agreement with the CMDT um, and the Liverpool Innovation Precinct to collaborate in education, in research, in commercialization um, capability, in um, seeking funding and, and advancing medical technology as a valuable contributor to, to each of our country's economies. But what it does for Liverpool is it actually gives us access to all the members of the CMDT. So all their major university research facilities, um, Callaghan Innovation is Crown Research Agency in New Zealand. So um, Innovation Science Australia is equivalent here. And, and to date, we've already established at least three um, really interesting research collaborations. Um, one with the Auckland University of Technology, which houses the Auckland um, Bioengineering Institute doing some really, really interesting work in concussion diagnosis and treatment. And also another one with an, um, one of our key um, physicians in the hospital working with Wellington to develop a really a groundbreaking medical device, um, which will turn probably stroke diagnosis on its head. Little Rocket is a typical symbol for startups who come to us from outside of Liverpool and then also industry. So whichever the source is, um, we filter them through COMAG, as I explained, what their needs are is really varied. It just depends on what they want, on what we do with them. Many of them we just send away to do some more work. Ultimately, where they want to get to is market entry, to scale up the business, to develop a technology, to get a trade sale. The economic view of that is whatever it is, it's going to end up in new jobs. That yellow arrow can be really long for med tech. Um, really complex. So we partner with people like Sakata Innovations, Big Tech um, Incubator, been around for 20 years, very experienced to help us with that. And we continue to work with our partners. 
seeking help there. And there's where our other business or innovation projects come in. Quality regulatory consultants, intellectual property strategy and licensing negotiation advice, and then also funding. So three venture capital um, funds who partner with us as potential sources of revenue for um, our startups. And then lastly, um, very relevant to the, to the previous um, presentations in placemaking. Um, as I mentioned, Liverpool's public domain master plan uh, won an award just recently. The placemaking piece is really, really important and shouldn't be underestimated for an innovation precinct because innovation is about people. It's not about big shiny buildings. It's, it's not about nifty gadgets, it's about people. So everything you do needs to support people to be innovative, to collaborate, to engage with others, to en encourage convergence. So the Liverpool um, Council um, Public Domain Master Plan covers the whole of Liverpool, but of course that includes the innovation precinct. So things like connectivity between buildings, um, you know, why the ground floor of new buildings become the most valuable piece from the innovation point of view, how, how porous or permeable is the area, can people move through the area and not be limited to footpaths, um, is there sufficient shade, is there places for people to meet outside, is it connected, those sorts of things become really important to, to the functioning of an innovation precinct and, and, it, and it's often an overlooked piece for people um, developing precincts. And last, I just want to show a very short video for you. So hopefully this comes across okay, Nicola. Um, and then that will bring me to the end. So I'll just play this for you now. Liverpool really is open for investment. This has become a magnet. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And we're actually seeing it unfold before our eyes. I'm Amanda Larkin, I'm the Chief Executive of South Western Sydney Local Health District. The Liverpool Innovation Precinct is this amazing opportunity in Liverpool where organisations have come together, universities, health, local government, to create an amazing health and academic precinct for the CBD of Liverpool. Lots of areas talk about being an innovation precinct, but Liverpool's actually doing it. I'm David Borger, I'm the chair of the Liverpool Innovation Precinct. The Liverpool Innovation Precinct consists of a number of really significant organisations like the Southwest Area Health Service, the Ingham Institute for Medical Research, the Southwest Sydney TAFE, and three universities are all wanting to be in the city centre. The institutions are really hungry for investment. The government committed 740 million for the hospital, but linked with that is Ingham. Uh, and the universities, so we see that we can create a precinct that's not only about giving great clinical care, wonderful education, um, and wonderful opportunity for research and development. My telephone is ringing hot day in and day out from nurses, doctors, researchers saying, have you got a job there? Is there a place for me here? I'm Professor Les Bouquet. I'm the uh, Director of Surgery and Professor of Surgery for Western Sydney University at Liverpool Hospital. The doors are wide open to the great Australian tradition of innovation. Don't forget that Australians are very, very innovative. This is the future of Australia. We're living it right here at Liverpool with the Liverpool Innovation Precinct. It's got the enthusiasm of a migrant population. It's got the enthusiasm of people like me who want to be here. I'm really excited. I've just been offered a job here at Liverpool Hospital as a junior doctor next year. I'm Veer Khan, a medical graduate of UNSW, based at Liverpool Hospital. I grew up in Liverpool. Having the Liverpool Innovation Precinct so close to home is really important. Being able to train and work and feel like I'm meeting the needs of the local community and where I've grown up, where I've trained, I think that's very valuable. The Liverpool Innovation Precinct is very much about Liverpool becoming the third CBD of Sydney. I'm Wendy Waller, I'm the Mayor of the City of Liverpool. This is the home and the soul and the heart of Western Sydney. The Liverpool Innovation Precinct will create a lot of employment opportunities now and into the future. We think it's a precinct that is going to get a lot bigger and a lot more interesting. Potentially a large private hospital moving into Liverpool uh, and, and lots of investment in the streets, in public transport and in infrastructure. So Liverpool really is open for business and uh, whether you're a super clinic or a, or a private hospital or a biotech or a medtech company, uh, I think the organisations here are wanting to work with you and to attract and encourage investment. If you're interested in developing your career, if you're interested in growing your business, if you're interested in getting a great education, 
Liverpool is the place you need to come to. Many hospitals are located outside of downtowns and CBDs and city centres. Liverpool is one of the few anywhere in New South Wales that's located bang in the middle of the CBD and there's lots of land and development opportunities available. I would say if you're going to invest in Liverpool, do it now. The Liverpool Innovation Precinct will also link very clearly with the Aerotropolis to feed into the airport. We know the opportunities are coming, the investment's already happening. You can feed it in the air, people want to come here to learn. The Liverpool Innovation Precinct's greater than the sum of its parts. And it will be a powerhouse. I think the future's pretty bright here. Nicole, and um, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lance. Um, that is just incredibly exciting to see um, just that collaboration and, and the work that the council and all, all those partners are doing. So um, yeah, hats off to you all, it's, it's amazing.